Tonight, Bezrat Hashem, we're going to do something that I tried a few years to build up towards and do. I never had the guts because it seemed so big. This concept is so big. But thanks to Rav Biederman, actually, we're going to, it, it, it was able to take such a big concept and bring it much more closer to home. What are we talking about? Welcome to Vayikra. People don't run to Shirem, mm -hmm. as you can see. Vayikra. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Even Kohanim, you know, it's, it's funny. Welcome to Vayikra. So I heard this voice. I heard this great, great voice. So I wanted to start with this. Because by the time that everyone will be learning this, it'll already be very much into Chodesh Nisan, which we're bringing in the Shabbos. And that's a very big thing when Vayikra comes out. On Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, it's Rabbi Nachman's birthday also. It's a very big day. It's also Rosh Hashanah Lam Melachim, Rosh Hashanah for the kings. So this vort is a vort of, of, of Malchus. And it's brought down the name of one of the Chernovitz of Rebbeim, one of the Chassidish Rebbes. Everyone knows it says Mishanichnas Adar Marvin Besimcha. So what's Mishanichnas Nisan? You have to have something. It can't just be, you know, Mishanichnas Nisan. Huh? Economica. Ah. Yeah. See. He said, Mishanichnas Nisan Marbin Beemuna. Mishanichnas Nisan Marbin Beemuna. So, Bezrat Hashem, tonight's piece, what we're going to be learning, is a concept of Marbin Beemuna. Marbin Beemuna. But we're going to be seeing a lot of different names and teachers that we don't normally usually learn from. So, we have to go shlav by shlav. Well, I, I hope, I believe we'll get there. What really struck, what really, uh, I guess, prepared this year for me, uh, or at least planted the seed, was many years ago. One of my biggest regrets when I was in yeshiva is that I was already doing music, because I got so busy, and I didn't, I wasn't able to be at a lot of the Thursday night shirim that Rav Bravender used to give. And he used to give an incredible Thursday night parasha shir. The few times that I was, uh, that I was there, that I didn't take a gig, or whatever it was, that it was, the night was, I, didn't, I wasn't working, so I'd go to the shir, and I'd see how Rav Brahminder takes something and just, in his own beautiful, beautiful, beautiful way, says very, very, very deep things, very, very, very simply. And it was this Shabbos, it was Parshat Vayikra, it was this Parsha, that Rav, Rav Brahminder took a man shiloch, and I remember he took it, and he just, he took the Ishbitzer, and he ripped it open for us in such a beautiful way, and every year when we came to Parshat Vayikra, I always wanted to go back to that. But I saw that there's no way I can, I, I, I can't, I'm not there yet, and you'll see what I mean. 
But I think that uh, in the Schut of Mishinichnas Nisan, Marbin Be'emuna, and as you'll see in a second from Rav Biderman, we'll have a chance to approach the world of Korbanot, Bezrat Hashem, in a very powerful and even passionate way, approaching the world of sacrifices. So, um, let's get past these around. And don't get startled by all the Metchoros that you see in front of you. A lot of it is Rav Bravender's period. I found the Shir in the archives of Hamiftar, and I transcribed most of it. We did that once before as well. God bless you. Huh? Has he come out that experiment? I don't know. I don't believe so. No. no. Everyone has? Needs to has? Okay, great. Okay, great. The nose bleeding section has? Hmm? Okay. Yalla. <laughs> so we have a very, very beautiful pasuk in the middle of, of a peric, in the peric bet, right after we come into Korbanot. And that's the following pasuk. Bechol korban min chatcha bamelach timlach. Velot ashbit melach brit elokecha meal min chatecha. Al kol korbancha takriv melach. There needs to be salt upon every single korban. Melach. In fact, it says over here in the middle, there's a concept called a, me- a brit of melach. Melach brit. Velot ashbit melach brit elokecha. Do not forget, do not dismay, do not completely, um, uh, I want to say, lashbit means over here. Well, maybe we'll see after we learn the second piece what the, what the, how it means in this, what it means in this context. But what it's saying over here, don't forget the Brit of Melach, especially when it comes to Korbanot. Now, what is the Brit of Melach? What's the covenant of salt? Does, does anyone know what the Melach Brit is? Has anyone ever heard of this concept, the covenant of salt? Not just Lot's wife, but what's that? Salt the carbon. Right, so why? Because it says to. What? This is, by the way, this is the headquarters of Melach here? <laughs> no. No, we're going to go to the... Except for Lot. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's think about it for a second. The concept of the covenant of salt is brought down three times. One time here, one time it's talking about the matnot keuna, the gifts you give to the kohanim, and another one by David HaMelech. So it's the first time in this context, yeah. But salt has to be upon every single korban. A kol korban cha takriv melach. Is anyone into, does anyone put salt in their soup before they even have, before they even taste it? Why? Why? No, I know. My mother-in-law does. My wife does. Why, why is it? I'm addicted to salt. Right. No. Salt what if? But what if? What if there was tons of salt in the soup? If what if someone told you this soup is so salty, would you put it in? Out of their heritage to the person that said it, I would wait and then put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you guys a great salt story. I think I told it many years ago. My first attempt to see if I'm shy to the kitchen was when I was 10 years old, or 11 years old, when I was in fifth or sixth, fifth grade in, in Ranana. And the Olim HaChadashim had to uh, present something the next day for a mesiba of Olim giving gifts to the Israelis. Now the Olim back then in Ranana was basically about 70% of the, of the grade. It was mamash, you know, we, we had a lot. So I didn't know what exactly to do. My mother had to go away for the afternoon and she, I asked her, can you... I want to, let's, let, me, let me make a cake. Or maybe my task was to make a cake, to bake a cake. So my mother gave me the, the she wrote, gave me the recipe. We went over all the instructions and everything they have to put into the, you know, to make a most standard, normal, regular chocolate cake. So I made it and brought it to school the next day. And then I came home and my mother asked me, how did it, how did, how did it go? I told her, Mom, this kid that took one bite in front of the whole class, he took a bite, and he spit it out so fast and said it was disgusting and asked me if I got this. He asked me, I think what he asked me was, did I get? The, did I pull this cake out of the Dead Sea? <laughs> so my mom said, let's look over the, the, uh, the recipe. What I, what I, so we go over everything, and I said, uh, remember one, one of them was baking soda. I said, oh, I couldn't find any. 
It's whatever. There's no baking soda. That's not the end. You could still have a very flat looking, weird looking cake without baking soda. I'm saying that wasn't it. Then we go over um, uh, salt. And I said, oh yeah, and here, a cup and a half of salt. And then I said, <laughs> what? I said, no, it's a teaspoon and a half. I put in a cup and a half of salt into this cake. That's why the guy said, you, you pull this out of the Dead Sea. Anyway, that's my, you know, I have my... Uh, since then, I kind of that I cannot step foot in the, you know, they don't want me to bake you anything. But salt plays a very, 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 very important role, not just when it comes to kashrus, where you have to have the concept of melicha, right, salting the meat. Spiritually speaking, there's something very, very deep going on. Where, do, where are we introduced to salt for the first time? Look what Rashi tells us. What is a melach brit? Why does the Torah tell us, don't forget this melach brit, when it comes to korbanot, when it comes to sacrifices? Rashi says, melach brit, shehabrit kruta lemelach misheshet yemei bereshit. There's been a covenant with salt from the six days of the creation. Where? Shehuftechu hamayim hatachtonim likarev bamizbeach bamelach venisuch hamayim bachag. What is, the, what is this Midrash that Rashi is quoting telling us? The um, salt has a promise that was made to it from the six days of creation. What happened back then? What does it mean, Maim Tachtonim, as opposed to what? Maim El Yonim. No, no, that is the ocean, but as opposed to the higher waters. There used to be one body of water, Maim everywhere, right? Then God comes and says... I have to be mavdil ben maim le maim. I have. There's got to be water up on top and water down below. Thus, we have the heavens and we have the water down here, the ocean, right on Earth. So, the water back then was promised. The ones that were further kiviachol away from the shemaim, it was promised to them. Don't worry. We're, you're going to find your place in this world. Where are you going to find your place in, the, in this world? Nisuch hamayim on Sukkot. Instead of pouring wine on the altar, nisuch yain, there's going to be water. And the happiest time of the year, that's where you're going to be pouring onto the altar. And the other resolution that it came, that it, was, it received was that it would be used on every korban. That, that what would be used on every korban? We're talking about salt water. Right. But so is it salt or is it water? Don't answer. But that's basically, we're going to see in a second, that's what it was told. When Hashem had to create this separation, there was a brit with the melech. It said, don't worry. You're going to find yourself, every time a Jew brings a korban, you're going to find yourself right there at that moment of expressing something to Hashem that comes from the heart of a yid. That alone, by the way, if we just said that, Torah, it would be a great cheer. Mamash, just, oh wow, melach brit, beautiful thing, it needs to be salt upon every single korban, that's the covenant that's done with salt, that's a very beautiful thing, if you think about it. Now, let's go weiter. Have you heard of the Ohev Yisrael? Has anyone heard of the Ohev Yisrael? The Apter, his base medrash was just resurrected in Nachon. The Ohev Yisrael is Reb Avram Yeshua Heschel of Apta, Heschel, the Heschel that we we're acquainted with. He says, that's his great-great-grandson. Avram Yeshua Heschel of Ap- the Apter Rebbe, the Ohev Yisrael. The Ohev Yisrael, Kishmo Kenhu, he was the big, big Rebbe, and he was like his name, Ohev Yisrael. In fact, I never saw this, but I'm told that his tombstone says, Pon Nitman Ohev Yisrael. It's in, uh, that's it. Yeah. Right, but I, but I, but I never yeah. saw it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the rounded one. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember it saying on that? Yeah. yeah. Pon nitman ohev Yisrael. Here's lies, a lover of Yidin. Pon nitman ohev Yisrael. So look what the ohev Yisrael told his neched, told his grandson. Re'ebni, see my son. Kshamachal tafel, when, a, when food is, tafel means like tasteless, right? When there's no taste in a food. Iyevshar le'ochlo, you can't eat it. Uch shemasimin bo melach, Mama J, this is, right? You put, even if there really isn't there, right? When you place salt into a dish that is tasteless, then it becomes, it gets a better flavor. Why is that? Now look what he said. This is mind-blowing. 
כי המלח הבאים מהמים שצועקים. Where, is, where does salt come from? It comes from water that was screaming out at the time of separation. Anan ba'inan, that means we want lemeheve kadam malka. We want to be before the king. We still want to be close to the... Even though, Hashem, you have to separate us and put us in the lower waters, really, it was, it was in pain. It, it accepted it. And it was screaming out, we want to be close to the king. Salt is salt. It gives good taste to food because whether its origins, its origins are... An entity that wanted to be close to Hashem. And it knew it had to be separated. Anan ba'inan lemeheve kadam malka. We want to be standing before the king. This, the, uh, the Abdur Rebbe, this is how he explains to his grandson why salt does that, why it has that effect, and why it betters dishes, food. Pretty far out, Torah, then. No? I'm shaking from it because <laughs> I really have had this addiction to salt and it puts it in a whole different perspective like I wish I could tell my parents. Well, don't tell your doctor who might, you know, <laughs> might be having cholesterol and stuff. But, <laughs> Stephen, it's okay? You Makabel, okay, okay, okay. Now. If it's Torah, it's good. Now. <laughs> if it's Torah, it's good, right? But what a chiddush you're on salt. Yeah. Wait a second. Wow, this is where it comes from. So, look what Rav Biederman does, this is Sir Biederman's last year's drasha in, uh, in Hebrew. Rav Biederman says like this, Hamayim atachtonim, the lower waters, bachu ve'amru, they were crying, Anan ba'inan lemehevi kamei malka, meaning we want to be, sta- we, we, we still want to be right before Hashem, but, but we're being divided now. Yiftiach ha'kadosh baruch hu lamayim atachtonim, nisu chamayim bechag ha'sukot, God promised the lower waters that they would be used during the highest simcha during the year, which is what? Simchas beis ha'sheva nisuch ha'mayim. Ubrit ha'melach b'korbanot, as well as being used for the covenant of salt, which had to take place over the sacrifices. Vezachu lekol ze. Why did they merit to find its, their place in these two monumental t- moments? Because they had such a longing when they said, Anan ba'inan lemeheve kame malka, when they said, We want to be standing before the king. Bischus osa hishtokekus, in the merit of that longing to be close to Hashem, Zachu liot krovim bechol korban bekorban. They merited to find their place. When it really matters, and every single korban, every time a Jew brought a korban, which for us obviously means every time a Jew wanted to feel close again, that which longed to be close is there, the salt. La'alot l'reach nichoach l'fnei Hashem, and this brings this reach nichoach before HaKadosh Bar. <coughs> see where, see where Rabbi is going with this, right? Look what he says now. Umikan. From here we learn. Hamargish et atzmo rachok mehabore. Anyone that feels themselves far from the Creator, umikol makom eno omer noash, but nonetheless does not give in to yeush, does not give give in to despair. Ela zoek, but from a place of feeling far, or even a, like the water was feeling like Hashem is separating it from being close. Meaning, did you ever feel that Hashem is actually very active in your life in a very bad way? Where you feel like Hashem is pushing you away? Did anyone ever feel that? That's what the salt felt. That's what the water felt. Yeah, Hashem, you're here. You're in this world. I don't know where, I'm not looking for you. Where are you? I see you're right here. And I feel like you're mamash pushing me away. Just like the waters did. So the Rebbe, says, the Rebbe Derman says, but a person, Dafka, in that place chooses to scream, you could do whatever you want to do to me, Hashem. Anan ba'iman lemeheve kame malka. I still want to be in front of my master, in front of my king. 
בהשתוק הכוזו, with this kind of longing, הוא גורם נחת רוח לפני המקום. This is what brings before HaKadosh Baruch Hu the concept of נחס. Remember when we were younger, all we wanted to do was to know that we're bringing נחס to our parents' eyes. נחס to our grandparents was a no-brainer. You could be spilling coffee on their, on their forehead. Ah, you shame and medley, you bring me so much נחס. It's no chokhmah there. To our parents, how much we wanted to bring them נחס. And Baruch Hashem, the schluss of Rib Shlomo's Torah, how he flipped it over, how much נחס we want to bring our children. So, he's saying this kind of longing to be close, even though you might be feeling pushed away, like that water did, not only do you find yourself back on the kor- in each korban, and on Chag Sukkot, but that is what causes the fragrance, the nachas ruach, the reach michoach, which every korban brought. The yiske librit im Hashem elokav, a person like this merits to have a bris with Hashem is God, ולהעלות על מזבח השם בכל קורבן, ולהעלות על מזבח השם בכל קורבן וקורבן, and you'll be placed on the קורבן of השם with every single sacrifice, כי זה כל האדם. Because this is essentially what man is all about. What is man all about? Wanting to be close and finding an expression for it. That is what man is all about. Wanting to be close and finding an expression for it, And man learned this, so to speak, from the crying out of the Ma'im HaTachtonim, of the lower waters. Now, I had a dilemma, because I wanted to go more and more in this direction, in this direction of what, how we can build a whole shir. Stam, if, if you're looking at like how to build shirim, this is a great, not who am I to give advice, I'll share with you a little bit of how, how sometimes I'll work on something. is that I'll see you could build something up, you already know that there's probably a lot more in this direction. Of what? Of finding connections between Melach and just simple Emunah, of mechaziking yourself with, with Emunah. And there's plenty. In Hasidus, there's plenty, plenty, plenty. What was my problem? Is that so far, this has nothing to do with the shear that provoked, that really pushed, you know, pushed me in the beginning to even go here. And I didn't want to say, oh, another year that I'm... Ki'ilu getting into what Rav Bravender had taught us years ago. So I pulled myself back into an initial shir we had learned many years ago on the concept of Melach. It's probably 14, 15 years ago. And um, it seemed like it was going in a completely different direction now. What have we established? Just one thing so far. What have we established? What is the concept of a Brit Melach? How would you say it? What's a covenant of salt? How do you reconnect yourself to the covenant of salt other than, in, especially in today's day and age where you can't take, there's no, there's no ability right now that we, we don't have the ability to pour salt over a korban. So how do we attach ourselves to Bris Melech today's day and age? How do we do it? I'm thinking we do it whenever we make hamotzi. Hashem, we sprinkle salt. Ah, you're using salt into there. Okay, that's fine. But I'm saying on a, on a spiritual level, Or on like a, not even spiritual level, but on a Vodas Hashem level, how do we connect ourselves to the Brit Melech? Especially when... Especially when you feel rejected. Especially when you feel rejected. Especially when you feel rejected. Dafka to still be able to say, you can do whatever you want to do to me. I still want to stand in front of you. What usually happens to us when we feel rejected by Hashem? We kind of say, oh, really? Okay. Fine, have it your way. And we justify that rebellion. And we feel fine about it. I, I clearly feel pushed away. Comes the Oye of Yisrael and the, the Apter Rebbe, he says, do you want to know why salt makes food taste good? Because where does it come from? It comes from a person who had a legitimate taina to say, we're done, because you pushed me away, Hashem. And Dafka there to say, I still want to stand before the king, That is connecting yourself again to the Brit Melech, which has to be on every yeah. single Korban. And we know and understand that today, what do we have instead of Korbanos? Tefillah. Yeah. So this is an essential part of our Tefillah, to connect ourselves to the covenant of salt. Now, let's go back and learn the Rashi again. Skip over the next two pieces over here, the Ibn Ezra and the Divrei Yisrael. 
And go down to Rabbi Ravinder. We have it in English. Okay. So Rabbi Ravinder said like this. From the Medrash quoted in Rashi, you learn two things. The water had a legitimate claim. In the world, there are separations from things that were once whole. However, by the way, up until now, you didn't have to pay that much attention, but now you really have to focus on every single word. Because now if you... I know, it stinks. No, no, now please, if you can give Mamash all your attention, because now we're starting to really crack open something that if we have enough patience with our seichel connecting to our lev, we'll get to something beautiful. From the Midrash quoted in Rashi, you learn two things. The water had a legitimate claim. In the world, there are separations from things that were once whole, like water, which was once one. By the way, what is the closest comparison that we could have in, in, our, in our lives to something that was once one, and seems to have to be separated. Razuk, the Right, I would, well, that, nachon, that's, yeah. that's more literally that we know to be, according to the Svarim, it's a Zivug, right? And that the Zivug spends the time in this world to reunite again. But really, the, the closest we have on, a, on an actual level is that there's oneness between a mother and a baby. Then, it, the only way for the baby to come into this world is for there to be a havdala. That's one of the explanations as to like a mother, so to speak, sits shiva, on the spiritually speaking, over, over that loss that it felt at the time of birth. We learned this many years ago. Remember in Pasha Tazria? That's why she can't come to the base of English. Remember that whole Torah? We had an amazing Torah. So, but over here too, there was one something that was one, and there had to be a separation of oneness. There was water. It was one, had to be a separation. God, third line, God more or less says, I have to separate this content of oneness. It would seem, sorry about that typo, that this separation alludes to an imperfection. There's something we cannot understand about the way the world was created. We would think that the world should be created the way God wanted it to be created. But for some reason, he created it in two stages, right? What would, what would have made more sense? That God would have created the world with my Elyonim and my Tachtonim. So just to jump to the end of what could be a different year, even though it's not this year, why didn't God create it that way? Because what wouldn't you have had? You wouldn't have had waters that are begging to say, I still want to be close to you. Salt, wouldn't, salt would do nothing to soup. Salt would do nothing to food. It wouldn't have that element because its origins wouldn't have been one of I don't care what you do to me, I still want to be close to you. And the the Aleph is sometimes like that. that Sorry, that say that louder? The Aleph, that the, the line is the Rakia, and the lower Yud is the lower water, and mm. the upper Yud is the upper And the Vav connects the two. And the Vav is the Rakia. Mm-hmm. So, what is the claim of the water? It comes and says to God, whatever the reason that you divided the heavenly waters from the lower waters is not my fault. That's your Indian Hashem. Why should I suffer? Why should I be in this odd position? You hear what Rabbi Ravinder is saying? That's a legitimate claim of the what? Like Hashem, you could have created it that it should be separate from There was oneness. You decided to make a division. Why should I suffer from it? That's what it seems to be. One, that's, that's one of the voices of the Midrash. The second thing we see in the Midrash is that the salt is water, and water is the salt. That's what we were saying before, salt water. Well, is it? Is salt water? Is water salt? The salt absorbs, and so you could say that the water exists within the salt in a certain way. Can you say the other way? That the... I don't think that it works that way. Right, so it's not fully. It's a weird thing. He's got, we're going to see it in Pesach when you make salt water, the salt very, like the water gets salty, but the salt settles down. But I think all salt comes from water. Right. Okay, that we could say, Nachon. And if it was all once, uh, you know, one, then even the even the fresh water that we have now was once, you know, part part of that same salt water. So the salt was literally been taken out of it. You have to extract. We have to extract the water from the salt. salt comes from the water. You, you have to, ex- to get salt. 
you, you have to evaporate the water. You have to take the water away. It's the whole desalination of life. So, the, but, but from the, the way the Midrash... What's the whole purpose of salting the meat is to absorb the blood, right? Because it, it soaks the blood up. Right. I would say about Ephrations, what's the whole point of salting roads when it snows? Which we don't do, because we don't, we don't really have the opportunity. Yeah, but we don't really have the opportunity in these winters to salt, to salt roads, right? But why do you salt a road during snow? It raises the temperature of the it water. It melts water, doesn't it? Wait a second. It what? Raises the temperature of the water. What what the act snow, what act is that? Melt. What act is that? What element is that more connected to? Heat or cold? Uh-huh. Okay. Now check it out. This is this this is Givalt. <laughs> this is Givalt. Just look at this. This is unbelievable. The second thing we see in this Midrash is that the salt is water and water is the salt. Somehow when God said, we'll pull, we'll put, we'll, we will put salt on the Korban, the water was happy with that. Okay? Even though, what do you mean? The water, why was the water happy? It's talking about salt. Why should the water, because really it's Hainu yeah? But also that's why, so my question before was, why do you have to give salt? Kaddish you know, Baruch who came to you know, the water and said, you know, you're going to be the, the height of happiness, you're going to be you know, uh, uh, there for, you know, uh, Chag Sukkot. Why does, he all, why does he need to say that there are two things? Well, now you have both components of the water, of, of the water and the salt. You have one that's there specifically for the water and one that's there specifically for the salt. Mm-hmm. And now you're saying that both components of those uh, that are both complaining together are both getting their pieces. Chidushe <laughs> I'm gonna, I want you to, I'm going to send this recording to Lori, and together you're going to listen to this and listen to the end of this year and realize what you just said right now. Look what you just said right now, okay? You're gewalt. Look at the kliyakar. Now we're going to understand the kliyakar. The kliyakar, the kliyakar is one of the mafarshim we have in the Mikros Gdolos. You've heard of the kliyakar before? I was just recently at his kev, not right next to his kev, it was a little bit far, too far for a coin. He's buried right next to the Maharal of Prague in the cemetery in Prague. The Kliyakar's mom is right next to the Maharal. So look what the, look what the Kliyakar says. And it's going to sound philosophical, but we're going to completely ishbit the daylights out of this philosophical piece in a second. So look, look what he says. Kedei lehamlich et HaKadosh Baruch Hu al kol hahefachim hanirim ba'olam in order... What does it mean to mamlich HaKadosh Baruch Hu? What does that mean to lehamlich et Hakadosh Baruch Hu? We do it Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. What, right. Hashanah, what does that mean to lehamlich to, to coronate the king over all contradictions that seem to be in this world? Al kol afachim anir im ba'olam vegarmu lerabim latzet leminut lomar mehatchala achat lo yitzu shtei afachim. This caused, what caused many people to go out into minut? Minut means like apikorosus, heresy, to leave the framework of, of, of Yiddishkeit. Because what was their taina? What's the taina of a lot of people that come to a conclusion of there's no oneness? Because they say, Contradiction cannot come from one. What, what, we could already jump to see what that has to do with our midrash. Why would they have a taina? A person? God, if you wanted the world to be higher waters and lower waters, in its establishment, that's how you would have created it. God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't create something imperfect. God can only create something perfect. So the fact that God created the world, then he says, I'm going to change it, now that shows you it's not oneness we're talking about over here. It can't be. You hear the, you hear the taina? So it's very clear taina. The Maharal addresses this all over the place. Right now, Ari Erdfarb and I are learning this piece in the Maharal for a few weeks that's speaking exactly about the taina that a lot of the Apikorsim had back then that said, you can't have a situation that from one comes two, or not just two, comes a contradiction. That's really what can happen. What's that? Why is there not with the not not with the mime, you'll see in a second with something else. He didn't create man and woman separate to start with also, 
<laughs> let's not let's not start this story at all. <laughs> let's not start. Look, look what he says here. Where is the contradiction? Vehine melach yesh betivo davar vehipucho. In salt itself, you have a contradiction. You have its its thing and its opposite. What's what's the contradiction with insult itself? Kiesh bo koach ha'esh ve'achamimut. It has within it. Stephen, what did you say? Sorry, some chaperets. What did you say? What is what ability does does what 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 force is there with insult? When it says koach ha'chamimut, the act of fire, of cooking, of melt, right? Making locks. What's that? Making locks. Vetoledot. <laughs> Hamaim, and it also has it. Listen, you take water, uh, you put it into, uh, you put salt into water, and then you put a cucumber in it. What ends up happening to it? It, it pickles, right? So what else? How else would you get to that? What what element do you use? What element happens? Is being takes place for that to happen? Something that's much more connected to the to heat than it is to to cold. So he says over here, it has the ability. Salt has the ability to cook, as well as to use that. But it, as well as it originates from water, that's why melach is a contradiction within itself. So much so that the, that the Kabbalists were, spent a lot of time thinking about the concept of salt, and they said shehu keneged midat hadin umidat harachamim. It's used also towards the aspect of judgment and the aspect of mercy. This concept of salt. Like the word Yashua. What's that? Kind of like the contradiction. Kind of, yeah, that's very good. That's very good. That it's metame and it's metahir. Mm-hmm. Now, look how Rav Bravender explains this Kliakar. This Kliakar is very hard. But look how he explains this. The Kliakar makes an important point. A lot of people have difficulty understanding how God can create a world in which there can be good and bad. How did this happen? A conclusion one may come to is that it cannot be that God created this world. That's what we said in the beginning about the, the Apikorsim, right? Salt represents a thing and its opposite. Salt represents the duality in the world. Just like salt has both the hot and the cold, this represents the fact that there is good and bad in the world. The covenant with Hashem, now we're going back to the Melach Brit, why was the covenant with Hashem done through salt? The covenant with Hashem is the ability to see beyond the contradiction. A person comes and gives a korban. A korban, now what is a korban? I was going to go into what korbanas are all about. A korban is partially thanksgiving, sometimes it's atonement. But why do I have to bring a korban? We have no way today of relating. The first ones that brought korbanot, what were they thinking? Who, they? Who was the first one to bring a korban? Okay. Well, according to the Midrash, it was Adam Arishon, actually. But the, what we know from the Torah is to bring a korban. How did they even know to bring korbanos? Why would they think that that's what you do in this world? <laughs> right? Like, why did they come to the conclusion... Where, where did it come from? You hear the question, Toby? Like, why, Bichlal, did they want to bring a korban? Why do you think that that's what led, what led them to think that this is the right thing to do? We just read it as if, yeah, this is what happens because people brought korbanos in those days. Well, that might be true. Because the Shaila is, where did that even stem from? Where did that, why didn't they, why didn't they, well, he says over here, what were they thinking? What was the idea? Where did it come from? Why didn't they build a monument instead? And then he said also, uh, I, just, I didn't put it in here. Why didn't they just make a video clip for God saying thank you? Yeah, but why, why a korban dafka? So we're going to understand now the whole concept of this Brit Melach. Let me go a little bit deeper into what korbanot are really all about. The world is ultimately a contradiction in essence. Is that true? Is that what it seems like? All day long, every single day? Absolutely. There's God, and the only way we are capable of speaking about Hashem is using words like holiness, oneness, pure. That's about Hashem. But what's going on down here? Sins, lusts, and we work our way through it. But is this the world of God? We spend our whole lives trying to get closer 
and to jump out of the world that we're in. Yani, it's like we have to get out of this crazy place, do the best that we can to get to somewhere else, right? But what about now, here? Is this world the world of God? Along comes the notion of Korbanus and says that the Ribbonus Shel Olam can be happy with things that are happening in this world. It actually brings a Reach Nichoach. The Korban can be pleasing to the Ribbonus Shel Olam. This means that even though it looks very often to us that God didn't really create the world where there is so much misery, Along comes the Torah and says that even Cain and Hevel understood that God can be pleased when a person is productive and does the right things while thinking about Hashem. Does anyone want to take a stab at this? What is, what is Reb Ravinder basically explaining about Korbanot? What does a Korban represent in this world? Why did Cain, how did Cain and Hevel understand that this is what you do? What is a korban? What, what does a you person do? You something that's valuable to you and you give it over to your creator. It's a, a physical way of showing gratitude. You're giving a, a gift, taking something away from yourself that's... Because why, and why do we think that does something because, in the world? Because it's, you're recognizing that what you, even what you have, even what you toiled for, isn't, you didn't produce it, you didn't make it. This is coming from God, so taking some of it and giving it back to God isn't throwing away your hard work. It's giving him back some you know, part of what he gave you. It's recognizing that he's above you and recognizing that, that he's there and he's the reason you have anything. If I'm out, what else, what else happens to a person when they bring a carbon? How? Like, why does that bring, why does, it's very good, why does that establish closeness? Giving, mamash, so connected to what you're saying, the act of giving creates less of a distance in the world. It brings, it creates closeness, like Shechaya said. The act of giving, that netina, mamash makes distance seem to disappear, which is what we all want. We want all distance that we feel between us and Hashem, between others, between us and our children. We know the giving is what really is receiving. We what, what, why is it? Because what are you receiving? When we say giving is receiving, what are you receiving? Closeness. So as much as you're giving, you're actually receiving something very strong. What separates man? What creates distance more than anything else in the world? The contradiction of this world. That it seems to be that there's so much distance between us and Hashem. <laughs> and it seems to be that even Hashem himself might not even be, this might not even be the world that he created. Why? Because it seems so far from oneness. It seems like there's so much ken, ve, ken velo, ra vetov, good and bad. Ah, so what do we need at a moment of giving, of expressing that we want to be close? What element do you need to sprinkle on that which expresses your closeness? The same thing. The duality. Melach. Melach comes dafka at that moment <coughs> for a specific purpose. To fight through the contradiction. Look what he says now. Al ken. Therefore. Nikra brit elokecha. Therefore, this melach, salt, over the korban is called melach brit elokecha. It's the brit with Hashem. Ki behakravazu Kortim brit im Hashem. When you bring forth a korban, you're basically establishing a covenant with Hashem. Lehashlito al kol hahefechim. To 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 basically lehashlito al kol hahefechim means crowning Hashem. Means I'm making you bigger than everything here that seems like a contradiction. You are sholet on all contradictions, Hashem. Look how he says here. Salt is an idea. It represents the resolution of the contradiction. And it says to us that you can't give a korban unless there's salt. What does that mean? Unless you feel that all is as it should be. That's really what you're saying 
through the putting through 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 salt through like the act of sprinkling salt on a korban. That's really the expression of the Yiddish and the Shema. Is it the salt or is it the actual act of bringing a korban? The act of bringing a korban is an inherent ratzon, a desire for closeness. But what's going to really close that gap and make that gap so much more smaller is the salt aspect. But it's a, it's good, it's a good shayla. But you see, the salt is really what's making, it's putting a tam in your kavana. You have a kavana to be close. What's the tam of the kavana? The ultimate closeness is that I'm a kabel. All is as should be. When he said that line, it struck me very strong. Not that things can't be fixed, cannot, can't be fixed. Things can always be fixed. But that God is certainly happy with the productivity of people in this world. That's, that's really what the Korban is coming to show. It brings a reach nichach. Yes, the world's not perfect. Yes, there's a lot of misunderstandings, and it's the way Hashem created this world. This is not our choice that there should be a lot of contradictions, mamash, inherent contradictions in this world. But how do we kind of power our way through it? Is when we say to Hashem, when we bring a Korban, when we have an act of expressing closeness, saying, Dafka here, Hashem, I'm sprinkling Melach on here. Why? Because what is this Melach saying? You're bigger than what seems to me as a contradiction. You're both. It's all you. Just like salt has both elements inherently in it, so too, Rivona Shleilam, everything is from you. All is as should be. Simple, right? <laughs> now, all of this, uh, what time is it? 5 to, okay. 8.15. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, all of this really was an intro to the Meshilach, but we're just going to say it in two minutes. All of this really, everything we said right now was an intro for the Ishbitzer. Now, you know, obviously, what is the Ishbitzer the master of? Showing you how there's no contradictions. That's what the Meshilach always does. The Ishbitzer always shows, you think you yourself are a walking contradiction? Mapitom. It's not like you're a good person and you're a sinner. You're only a good person. The sins are illusions. He has this all the time, right? So you can just imagine what he does with the concept of melech, right? Of salt. So we'll try to see what he's going to say, just in a nutshell. Melech hu hefech hatov. Salt seems to be the opposite of good. Why? Ki lo yanuach lehitpashet u legadel hatov. When you place salt over something, what doesn't it allow it to do? To grow, which would seem like a bad thing. Nachon? Ki eretz melecha ina megadelet. Salty earth does not allow growth. Ach hu davar sheyuchal litarev imatov uleosif tam latov. But what can salt do? As much as it prevents growth on its own, when it's mixed in with something that's already good, it produces a good time to it. Like food. And other things. Okay, what's Rav HaChovel? A captain of a ship is called what? A Malach. A sailor is called Malach. Why? Why is this? Lefishem me'arbev hamayim. Because what is he basically doing? What is a sailor? What, what's the job of a captain of a ship? He's finding. Do you hear how deep this is? I forget. Shilach, maybe. Yeah, we have it over there. Yeah. So what is the Ishbitz is saying about a, about a, a sailor? What is he? What is essentially his job? And what's his? What does he do? He handles the different waves of of water that come that come in and out. It's it's kiviachol like he's handling the separation between higher waters and lower waters. Umalach a melach who lishon irbuv, and melach itself is the lashon of something that's mixed together, like we saw has both elements in this. 
ועל עניין הזה נאמר, and on this עניין, exactly this matter, it said, וכל קורבן מנחתך במלח תמלח. Whenever you want to come close and bring a קורבן, you have to, you have to, it has to go through an act of salting. What does that mean? To, to an act of salting? היינו שידבק האדם להשם יתברך את עצמו. That I cling, it's really what the Kliyakar is saying, it's what Rav Biederman is saying. He's saying the act of salting is man choosing to vake us in this world. To go through, to cut through all the contradictions, because there will always be contradictions. What's the contradiction? I'm coming to bring you a korban in this world, I'm trying to close the gap. But I know that there's still so much separation. It's the way you created the world. So what am I going to spritz onto it? Melach. That which goes beyond contradictions. I choose dveikus. Hainu sheidabek ha'adam la'ashemit brach et atzmo ve'lo yinatek al yedei shum dvar ha'olam hazeh and I will not allow anything in this world to disconnect me from you. Rak adrabe. On the contrary. Yitbarer dveikuto beyoter not only that, my dveikus to you will now become even clearer, ביותר, בטוב טעם ודת, just like salt. It gets put into a food, salt on a korban. As much as I thought I knew what it means to be close to you by wanting to express it, I make a conviction, I establish a bris when I put melech onto a korban. Because I can have all the good ritzonos in the world, But unless I establish that we're, we're through this thick and thin no matter what, and I declare that Dvekas overrides everything in the world, I could bring five million korbanas. But I'll have to keep on bringing korban after korban because I'm going to have to keep on needing to express, I need to be close to you, to be close to you. But when you put the melech onto it, what does melech do? It shows you, not only do you want to be close, When you put melech in it, you, you mix the, the, the like, like into a food, now that which was already a dish, which is like a korban, an expression, it gets even, what you really want to say to Hashem, becomes even tastier. It becomes even closer. Many of us want to bring a korban because we know it's the right thing to do. But that's like a food without, that's like a certain dish without, without salt. Comes salt and it's the element of fighting through duality, and it has this voice with it, like Rav Biederman and the Oav Yisrael said to us, Anan ba'inan lamehave kadan malka, I want to stand before the king. And then when you put that onto the korban, you can reconnect yourself to the brit, which goes through every seemingly con- seeming contradiction that we have in this world. <coughs> Because the vacus overrides any contradiction. You could say, I still, I want to be... I want to be close to you, but I want to cling to your Yibbana Shleim no matter what, then anything that comes and says there's good and bad in the world, you could say, I know. I used to be close to Hashem. He pushed me out of here, just like the upper waters. And guess what? I still want to be close. And it's a Yitzhahara, Sitra Achra, you can't talk to me. You have nothing to tell me. You have nothing to convince me. I agree with you. I acknowledge there's a contradiction in this world. I acknowledge that same, things seem to be not even. I acknowledge that there's separation. And yet still, I'm choosing much more than that. So we see here that this concept of melach, now when you dip some you know, challah into, your, into, your, into the melach, or bichlal, Seder night, you know, with the salt water, now bichlal, these things take on much deeper concepts, much deeper meanings in our lives. But to go back to the way we, we, we said it in the beginning, it's really a concept of like, like, uh, like the Oye of Yisrael said, When food is tasteless, you can't eat it. But when you place some salt into it, the tam becomes filled with good. Because water comes from the tzaka, the waters that are crying out, We still want to be close to you. This gives a good taste to any food in the world. So we should be privileged to, Bezrat Hashem Barach, to find out a way 
how in today's day and age where we don't have korbanot, to implement this limud in this world, to fight our way through all contradictions, if we try to fight it through the seichel, the seichel will never tell you that when you feel like you're being kicked out of a house, to still say, I still want to be here. The seichel will never lead you to that conclusion. The seichel will tell you, you need to find shelter somewhere else. So we don't go there to, to, to fight through contradictions. We go to the way the Rebbe Shleilam told us, the way the Midrash is telling us. Hakol korban cha, every time you want to korban, every time you want to get close, takriv melech, means go to the same element that was produced from separation and still begged for closeness. Every time you want to get close, don't pretend that there's no separation in the world. It's there. It's the world we were put in. But when you at that moment bring a korban and put melech onto it, that brings reyach nichoach. That brings, that, that mamish was what brings a holy fragrance to the shamayim. In other words, to make this very deep concept a little bit more in our world that we can do something with it. It seems that there's more and more misery in the world. It just seems like that, usually. Um, but the only way that we can get through it, not just get through it, but even elevate those moments where it seems that there's such a stira mineyubay, a contradiction within itself, is when you don't pretend that all those confusions are not there, but when you say, even with all of them being there, wanting to be closer to you is much, much, much more potent than any of those other confusions that are in this world. That kisufim, that ratzon, is what brings the reach nichoach to Hashem, and that takes all those things in life, all the dishes that are placed on our table, all the mitzvahs we're doing, all the Shabbos we're keeping, all the halachas we're following, and you know what it's making them feel? Much tastier. It's putting melach into all of our dishes, our mitzvahs, and it's making all our food that we're anyway eating and doing in this world, giving it so much more meaning. So there's a little bit of an insight to this concept called Brit Melach, and should be privileged to feel the brit we have at the Kaddish Baruch Hu, through every single mitzvah that we're doing to override any contradiction and any, what seems to be like Hashem, and I know this happens quite often, where we feel like Hashem is mamish saying, I'm not interested in you. It's out of here. And we're like those lower waters saying, you do what you have to do, I, I'm doing what I have to do. And I have to tell you, you could, you could say this, Anan, and I feel like this is what the Yidin did after the Shah, you know? Mm -hmm. Like those that were holding on, even those that were subconsciously holding on, but before it seemed like they, they neglected Torah and Yiddishkeit, they're really saying, we need to build Eretz Yisrael. Why? Because we need to still be close to the king, no matter what. Talk about contradictions. Yeah, we've got stare us there. Hashem, no matter how much you try to hide from us, right. we're not letting you. We're not letting you. And Malasot. Sorry, didn't work. Didn't work. Interesting that tears are salty. Hmm. Salty tears, yeah. Can you give this shear in the Knesset? Shear in the Knesset for Achdut, like forget about all of your contradictions and all of your anger and all. And maybe this doesn't work with this, but we're still on the chad. Chaim. <laughs> 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 everyone. Uh,